Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so magical. And your costumes are really just characters in themselves. So can you sort of speak about uh, the process of, of designing, where you, where you started, where your inspiration was drawn from? Um, where I started. I had a long, I had, I had a luxuriously long prep time actually, so I was lucky. So where I started, I started by looking at the original animation and then mm -hmm. decided to forget about it. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. no one told me. I didn't, I didn't have to reference it, but I thought I'd have a look at it. And I don't really remember seeing it as a child. Mm -hmm. Don't remember seeing it. So that was interesting. Um, but what I liked about it was that it looked like 1940s. I mean, it was made in 19... Well, it was released in 50, so that it was obviously made... So the style of drawing and the animation had a lot of 1940s, 1950s about it. And I think that was in the back of my mind, obviously, when I was doing the stepmother mm -hmm. and the stepsisters, mm -hmm. and then deciding on which, what... I mean, I was given the option. I was given the... the luckily, being given the choice of, like, where, where, where do you want to set this? Um, and I looked at lots of different periods and... and landed on the 19th century because I mean it, it varies quite a lot from the beginning to the end and I thought we could use all of that mm -hmm. as, a, as a starting point. Um, so that was it, it's deciding which period it should be and then look, then I start with looking at reference material whether it's and I looked at 19th century or 19th century portraits anything plus fashion I look mm -hmm. at fashion from any period really there's, there's always something useful to look at and then divide all that up into characters um, so I have my little reference pictures of the, you know, for the stepmother, sisters, Cinderella, fairy godmother, <coughs> prince, and all the men. Uh, what was the question? How do I <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's how I start. I basically start by gathering yeah. images. Right, yeah. Gathering yeah. images. And then the next thing is then eventually, then hopefully after that, you start knowing who the cast is. Because you don't know who the, I mean, the only person I knew who was definitely in it was Kate mm -hmm. when I started. So I knew that she was the... Um, stepmother, which helps, and then I can't actually, I don't actually even begin to think about designing anything until I know who all the other actors are. Mm. Uh, and then, then it kind of falls into place. And then I start looking at colours and fabrics before even shapes and drawing or doing anything. So was the only requirement that the Cinderella dress had to be blue? No mm. one said that to me. Really? No, oh, and wow. really, no, no one actually said it, and I was really surprised. And I, I, and I just thought, oh, we're doing a new version, we're doing a new contemporary version. So I went through every other, I'm not going to do a blue dress, but we've done mm -hmm. that. And I went through every other colour option, going back to blue. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, well, it's not going to be the same blue as the one we've seen. It was going to be a blue that I like, and then I worked on that. And I, I don't know, the reason I came back to blue was it just seemed to work the best. And then, of course, in retrospect, of course I couldn't. I mean, probably, right. if Disney had caught wind of the fact that I was considering <laughs> orange or whatever, you know, <laughs> it, would have been, it wouldn't have been allowed, because it would just, you know... Just wouldn't years? be allowed. I know and now, you know, now being aware of, you know, five and six year old little girls, I know that I've been lynched, you know. <laughs> <laughs> How many layers was the dress? She was kind of, Lily was a eight little to 12, touching yeah. them. No, little not little that many. Well, I mean, mm. not as many as eight to twelve actually. Mm. The, the top layers, which are all fine, there's about, about five or six of those. Then underneath that, then there's a petticoat. Mm -hmm. And there's only one layer of petticoat, but with lots of frills on the end of it. Mm -hmm. And then a cage. So. It was really important to keep the dress light. I mean, to look voluminous, mm -hmm. but but really, really light. Mm. The thing about uh, Ella's costuming throughout the film is it it was so simple yet so elegant and never overly done. And out of all the characters, aside from Kate, you know, mm -hmm. who had these beautiful you know gowns and, and outfits on, you sort of wanted to dress like her. You wanted to be like her just because she wasn't overdone. You know, was mm -hmm. that intentional? Ella. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now the whole the whole point of her was that she's simple I mean you know she's just she's beautiful in her simplicity she doesn't have to try and win anybody over by embellishing and being over made up I mean like complete opposite to the to the sisters who are completely over down and over the top and vulgar you know I mean like you, you know trying too hard no she was meant to be completely simple, even down to the ball gown I didn't want to be overly decorated at all I wanted to be really really simple she wears no jewellery Right. That was the thing. I, mean, I think I think Disney did want me to do jewellery. They wanted the tiara and the necklace and all the rest of it. And I said, no, she's not having any jewellery because everyone else has got jewellery on. She didn't have jewellery for the wedding. I love the um, kind of the story and the symbolism with the dress, with the butterfly that yeah. her father gave her, and then as it's happening, these butterflies come out. Um, was that something that was kind of in the script that you had well, to work with? Or? The butterflies coming around. No, I. I mean, I have to. I mean, I don't remember the butterfly. I mean, I think the butterfly obviously was in the script being given to her. And then I didn't really consider that. I came up with the butterfly motif for the dress 
at the very, very beginning, I was thinking of lots of how do I decorate this dress? Do we do flowers? And I thought, well, flowers is too much. And then we, when we there's no decoration, then I thought about Cinderella. The whole point of Cinderella, she's at one with nature and friends with the animals and all that stuff. Well, maybe the animals help make <laughs> somehow. Um, you know, like the mice help her, don't they? Uh, help her fix the mother's dress before going mm. to the ball. And I just like, I just thought, would it be really nice, a nice idea to have butterflies? <clears throat> I went through bows and not bows and butterflies, and then I thought maybe the butterflies. Are how how are the but why are the butterflies there on the dress? So it was like, w wouldn't it be nice if they just came in? So I did the decoration on the dress anyway and hoped mm -hmm. that, that, that the visual effects department would join me on that one and make it, make it happen. Yeah. Well, obviously the dress is just absolutely gorgeous. Congratulations. I, I would like one from, for a grandma version of it, but um, <laughs> just absolutely gorgeous. What um, The blue that you chose mm -hmm. matching Richard's eyes. I suppose it is coincidentally. Was, was that it, it, wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't choose the blue to match his eyes, because actually I think I, I was doing the colour of the dress before I even met Richard. Um, and it's just very lucky that he's got those amazing colour eyes, and that's why I did, I did elements of blue with him the whole time as well. And, it, and then the, 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 um, the colour he wears for the wedding is the same colour as the ball gown as well, that was kind of deliberate. But the blue of the dress is made up of lots of different colours. It's not just a blue, it's not right. a flat blue. It's made up of greens and blues and lavenders yeah. and lilacs and whites and, you know, just all layers all built up together to make one moving watercolour, which is what I want. I wanted to look like a watercolour that was actually moving, so. Very good gown. <laughs> um, stunning. But uh, Lily, I think it was, was saying that it was sort of a light production, that there was to be It was. Uh, there, yeah, she had, like, four... And LEDs, or is it 4, 000, 4, 000? Yeah, 4,000 LEDs, little wow. LEDs on tiny, mm. tiny, tiny little things wow. on wires, on lots of different circuits, all sort of woven into the dress. And then there's a cage which holds the dress out, and then all these wires <laughs> hung out underneath it. And then she carried a battery pack, and all of those had to oh, all had to then be plugged into this battery wow. pack. Every night. So you worked closely with the, is that the visual effects? So no, no, that wasn't visual effects, that was actually with the lighting okay. company. Mm -hmm. who, 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 you know, lighting company who designed like lighting installations for the Rijks Museum in Amsterdam. I mean, wow. it's a Dutch company, Philips. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they usually do lighting installations for spaces, and they'd never done a lighting installation for a person before. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite a challenge. And Helena was a trooper about wearing it because it wasn't comfortable. I mean, it wasn't comfortable that she was ha carrying a battery pack around. And, wow. You know. the, the female characters, of course, the dress is elaborate, beautiful, and every different, uh, the stepsisters and whatnot, but the handsome gentlemen... Yeah, no, they're, they're just as important. They're just, and, and, just as, and just as embellished, if not more. Yes. A lot of the time, people like the Grand Duke is completely, you know, all the embroidered, right. diplomatic and everything, and all the embroidery on the prince... Uh, and anywhere, it was all sort of sent off and, and done in Pakistan, actually. Mm. Beautiful. You mentioned that you um, you looked at the, the animated classic um, at first and then kind of yeah. threw it out. Were there any other um, film or stage versions of Cinderella I that you looked every at? I watched every version I could find just to see what they were like and to see how different people did it. And also quite a lot of time to see what the, how they did the shoot. Mm -hmm. um, it was fun watching them, but I didn't really, I don't recall actually using, you know, copying anything or using it. It was just like, okay, I've seen all those now, let's try and do another one. Let's try and do a, a different version. Cool. How did you design the, the glass slipper? <laughs> <laughs> um, for first thing I had to do was decide on a shape. Mm -hmm. And I knew I didn't want to do, I didn't want to do a mule, you know, which is, she was out of that, yeah. flopping around, because I thought, I'm never going to have to run in that. Well, not that she wears the shoe, but it's mm -hmm. a funny shape. I actually really wanted it to be an enclosed shoe so that you re so people really couldn't get their foot into it. Um, so then I, I looked at lots of different shoe shapes from all different periods. I mean, just to find the right elegant shape. I didn't want to do a completely contemporary shape, but it obviously had to appeal to a contemporary audience. Mm -hmm. And that shoe shape came from a shoe I found in a museum in Northampton in England. It was a shoe museum. And it was from the 1890s. I found a wow. shoe that was amazing with this five-inch heel like this high. Mm. And... They let me borrow it, they let me take the shoe away, borrow it, get it scanned, 3D version of it made, mm. technically drawn up, and then that was my template. Wow. To then turn that into glass. And I went through various different stages of like, we'll do clear glass, we're doing grey glass, we'll do coloured glass even. I thought it doesn't have to be clear. 
-hmm. And then, you know, I think I saw a, either a piece of crystal from a chandelier or a, or a crystal paperweight and just saw what the light did, it went through, and I thought, that, it has to be crystal, it has to be crystal and light. Everything's about the light, we like the dresses mm -hmm. about the light, and every time yeah. I use crystal on any of the costumes, it's not really to, to see big jewels, it's for the light to hit. Who was, sorry, who was the most difficult to dress based on the, based on what? The shape, their shape, their shape or their, no one. their oh, well I suppose actually the captain of the guard was a challenge, I mean <laughs> his thighs are bigger than Lily's waist, yeah, <laughs> he's the biggest man I've ever had to dress, oh, yeah, and the, and the poor tailor who was made, the, there was one man that made all my men's clothes, and there was a Chinese man called Chang, who was little, he had to stand on a chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Captain of the Guard was, uh, I guess he was the, he was a, a pretty big challenge. Well, I think he looks great. I mean, you know, I, you know he looks Incredible. really impressive. Incredible. And we had to use, I mean, everything had to be such a bigger scale. I mean, like all the embellishment mm -hmm. on his uniform was like bigger, bigger <laughs> cord than, or and bigger, in, you know, bigger bits of embroidery, bigger cord than everybody else. Cause just because it, it had to be, everything just had to be so much bigger. Every bit of it was made especially. I mean, his boots were enormous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was it like to work with Kate again, to, to realize this another character? Oh, it's great. Her. And do you know what? I worked with a straight after Cinderella on another film as well that was set in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. So oh, nice. it really, really helps to work with the same actor more than once because, you, you know, you've got a shorthand or whatever. You know physically what they're like. You know what works, what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, good. I'm, just, I'm just happy it was Kate. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite costume piece from this film? I don't have one. I can't you don't have a favourite. That you know, I mean, like I say, they're like my, my babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, during filming, I change my mind. You know what I mean? I like the, whatever the newest one is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I couldn't have a favourite. I loved all of, um, for me, the um, Every Stepmother costume was yeah. the ones, more I mean, than of course, more than anything Cinderella put on that hat and just yeah. the, you know, the, the form-fitting skirts, but then the huge bustle yeah. that comes out. I mean, the, her costumes are all exactly the same shape. Yeah. It's the same silhouette, just changed the, change the fabric and change the, you know, the color. It was just so visually striking. So in a way that, in a way that was rather similar to how the animation works or how, a, you know, I, I kind of looked at it all like a children's um, illustrated book, you know, and in, in children's illustrated books, people don't change their clothes much, and if they do, it's exactly the same shape, just yep. the colour. Just to make it simple, there was no point complicating it. Exactly. What, would it, what does it take to get the, from the design to the actual completion processes? How long of a time um, period for Do you know what? It really depends on the costume. Sometimes you have to do things really quickly. Sometimes there's just not time. You have to have an idea make your choices in fabric, make it, and it could be, you know, it could be uh, less than a week. Oh, wow. And other times, like, the ball gown would, was months. Mm -hmm. Normally, you don't have that luxury. No, on, a, on a normal, on a, on a film, you have to work pretty fast, actually. It might take, depending on how many fittings you get, I mean, the fittings are really important. You can do something in a couple of days, or it can take weeks and weeks and weeks. Actually, sometimes it's better for it to be quicker, because the longer it takes, then you start to change your mind. Right or you go off it, or you think, I could have done this better, but then it's too late to change. I mean, in a way, there are so many costumes in that, but you have to be pretty quick. It's, it was months to make them all, but each individual one is. I mean, but then, having said that, the ball gown, and I know the statistics for this, was 500 man-hours per dress, and that's 20 people wow. worked on wow. it. Wow. How many um, ball dresses did they make? Eight. 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 I mean, that's, it's, it's like, you know, so, imagine what they're worth. They're worth a lot of money because they, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the time. It's like good pieces of couture, mm -hmm. all handmade. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. What about working with Dante? Do you guys find yourselves collaborating often to fit the pieces into the production? Yeah, design? no, it's very important to collaborate with the production designer and, and the set decorator. Um, especially on, I mean, on this, when we were lucky because we were working in a studio and we were all, we were filming in the studio and we all had our workrooms in the studio. So, it was really easy to go up to the art department and see what they were doing. And especially, I mean, for the ball scene particularly, I mean, and, and everything that happened in the palace, like what were the palace colours, we had to, you know, we have to work together with all of that. And Francesca, the set decorator, would come to me to look at the palette for the, for the, um, for the, all the ball gowns and to choose the drapes and all the rest of it. It's, it's really important to actually see what someone else is doing. 
we don't we don't really sit down and discuss it. I mean, we, mm -hmm. yeah, we 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 sort of discuss what the, what we thought the colours for the the palace should be, and mm -hmm. I kind of came up with that, and then he would then the, the heraldry and all the flags and everything would work in with what all the the guards are wearing or the servants are wearing. It seemed like there was just an endless sea of people in that in that ball scene. Mm -hmm. You know, off the top of your head, you know, is How there a ball? How many were there? Yeah, I, mean, um, I you know, might be a couple of hundred, maybe not as much. I mean, they were always moving, so they looked like more, mm -hmm. and the dresses were big, so they take up space. Maybe not as many, maybe one hundred and fifty, I think. Was there anything uh, particular that you were referencing? Yeah. Well, the, probably it was the hardest dress to design because it has to follow the ball gown. Mm -hmm. And it was the end of the film. But it's a, so it's a bit of a walk down frock but without being like the ball gown. So it had to, it, it couldn't really compete with the ball gown, so I knew I had to change the shape. I didn't want to just have a white version of the ball gown. Um, and I, I kind of wanted her to look sophisticated suddenly, because all the way through she looks young and girlish mm. and, you know, sweet. And I thought now she be, she's become a woman, and that was the idea of that shape. And yeah, the Grace Kelly hair and the whole look of it. Um, and I also wanted it to, I didn't want it to be completely white. I don't like completely white mm -hmm. wedding dresses. And so the flowers that I didn't do on the ball gown, I decided to do on the wedding dress. And I played with it being 3D flowers, and then just thought, no, let's just do the painted flowers. And that was inspired by like 1950s dresses, where they never had painted 50s dresses. You only see it for a split second, don't you? <laughs> so when you do a, a Disney film like this, um, obviously Disney Consumer Products is going to make lots of merchandise, yes. and so there's a, a whole slew of of dolls featuring your costume designs. What is that well, like I to see seen them? them yet. Oh, you haven't seen them. Yet. <laughs> no, I was just asked that question before. Okay. About the little girls' dresses. I haven't seen them yet. I'm okay. horrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised. I don't. It'll be funny. It'll yeah. be really funny to see them.